Yo, what is going on guys? My name is Brent and welcome to part 2 of my tutorial series on creating multiplayer games. So in this tutorial we're not actually going to be doing any coding just yet, but we're going to talk about what is actually going to happen between our game and our Node.js server, and how those two are actually going to communicate through a technology called Socket.io. Okay, so I have this little uh, graphic here. We have a Node.js server that is constantly running either on our local machine or maybe uh, somewhere on the internet. And then we have our clients where our client is basically our game that we're going to be creating. You can see here uh, that we have a socket IO connection and basically what this means is it puts a little hole into our server that our um, game can actually connect to so this socket io allows a uh, real-time communication between our node.js server and our client uh, both the server runs an, uh, a server instance of socket IO and each client run client instances of socket IO. So each one, each one performs a different uh, function. A socket IO for a client uh, works specific for that uh, client and then the socket IO for the server uh, can talk to each individual client, but it can also talk to all the clients simultaneously. So socket IO works on an event system. There's a connection event, there's a disconnection event, custom events that we can create ourselves and a few other events that we probably won't talk about anytime soon. I think the best way to understand this is to see an example. Um, so say we have, uh, we, we open up our phone and we got a game that's a multiplayer game and we want to connect to the internet and play this game. So when we open up our phone, typically what the game does is it uh, goes to a server, which in our case will be a Node.js server and request access uh, for our for our game to connect. And so what happens is, is it sends a connection to our socket IO on the Node.js server and says, hey, can I connect? Node.js or socket IO can say um, yes or no. And what happens if it says yes, is that there is a connection made between these two, a bi-directional connection where the server can talk with the client and the client can talk with the server. Now this fires off our very first event, which is the connection event. And both uh, the server and the client can react to this connection uh, in different ways or in the same way. So a client may uh, say, you know, register his uh, username and ID and the server uh, may also register that user ID and put it in some sort of an array or something like that so the server knows of all the different uh, usernames that are currently uh, playing on the server. Now when a client disconnects from the server, turns off his phone, um, the disconnect event fires on both the client and the server. The client may or may not want to do anything at that point, uh, it just wants to get rid of uh, the connection, but the server definitely will probably want to do something such as remove that username uh, or user ID from its array of indexed currently playing users. Now, in between the connection and the disconnection event, we can create um, custom events, such as a move event or a player moved event. And what that would look like is, uh, say client one is playing some sort of starship uh, game and it moves uh, to a different location on the map. Well, we want to notify all the other connected players that we have made that move to a different location. So what uh, client one will do is send us a data packet that says, hey, I moved to this X and Y coordinate, notify everybody else. So it sends that data to our Node.js server through Socket.io. And then Socket.io says, oh, okay, I got this new uh, move uh, event. I in And it knows what to do with that data. If it gets a move event, it's supposed to emit or broadcast that move event to all other connected clients. So what it's going to do is it's going to send that move event to client two and to client, you know, three, four, five, all the way up to N, everybody who's connected in that room. Client two and up to N will know what to do when it receives a move event from the server. If it receives a move event from the server, that data probably comes with a user ID and a position. And so what it's gonna do is move the starship with that ID to its new uh, position X and Y coordinate. 
Another way that we can think about this whole process is similar to a chat room where our server, our Node.js server, is the chat room itself and each individual client or game clients are individual users connecting to the chat room where they can talk to each other. So let's go to socket.io slash demos and take a look at their chat demo here. So when we actually click this chat link, we're going to presume that the connection was made between our computer and the chat server itself. And then what happened was, is that the chat server emitted an event back to our computer saying, um, get username, the username event. Our, our client uh, knows what to do with that event. It prompts us with some sort of text that says, what is your username and allows us to input a username. Now we inputted my name, Brent, and we hit enter. Now what happens is our client is emitting an event back to the server that says add user. We're gonna just make up names for this, but this is the event name, add user, and the server now has to respond to that event, uh, which would be, to emit uh, our username to all other connected clients. So you can see this dediner.com is another connected client somewhere in the world and it has been notified that I have connected uh, to the chat server and then can send me a message. As I st start typing, um, my client is actually sending an event uh, is typing to the server. Now the server knows that when it receives an is typing event that it needs to broadcast that to other users and as you can see down here or you could see I was receiving an event from another user that uh, they are typing. So the client, the server is emitting is typing events to everybody else anytime it receives an is typing event uh, from an individual client. Now I have typed out some sample text here. I'm gonna hit enter and I want you to pause the video and see if you can map out in your head what actually occurred uh, after I hit enter. So did you get it? Do you think about it? Okay, so let's talk about it. Um, what happened when I hit the enter button is that my client sent a send message event to the server. Now that send message event contained two different things. It contained my username and the message that I sent. So when the server received that send message event, it knew what to do with it and that was to send that message to every other connected client. So every other connected client now receives my send message event and it opens up the package and says, oh, I have a username and some data here. In their case, it's their turn to respond to that and it takes the data out of the package and renders it to their screen so it appears to be a chat room. And finally, before we end this tutorial, I wanted to just give you a quick glance at the code to the chat server that we just looked at. Now, this is just the server-sided code, and I don't expect you to understand this, but I just wanted to kind of let you look at it really quick. Um, here is the IO, which is the socket IO connection event. Uh, so basically what it does is it takes a, uh, it creates a new user here, and then it, it listens for events. It has a new message event that it can respond to, in which case it's going to emit a new message event to all other connected clients and send the username and the data to those connected clients. It has an add user event in which it adds the user to you know the server itself so it can keep track. And then it emits a, uh, a login event to the connected client um, with the number of users and such like that. It also emits a broad broadcast to all connected clients that I myself have joined the chat room. There's an event uh, with uh, that's called typing. So this is, it emits to all other connected clients that I am typing. Um, also stop typing, uh, similar to typing. And then it ends, uh, has a disconnect event where it takes me out of the server itself, my username, um, removes me from the number of users and emits to every other connected client that I have been disconnected. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I know you guys are used to me always coding in every one of my videos, but um, in this case, I think it was good to go ahead and get the theory of this out of the way so we didn't have to take breaks in between every turn uh, to discuss this. So now you have the basics of how to uh, 
communicate between a game client and a server and how that server communicates data to all connected clients. Um, so for future reference, when we get started in coding, you'll have a little bit better understanding of that. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns on this video, go ahead and post them below. I'm pretty good about getting back to everybody. Uh, if you like that video, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. I'd greatly appreciate it. Uh, but more importantly, please share the video. I'm trying to grow this channel and you guys have been an amazing help. Uh, if you're feeling generous, check out my Patreon page. I'll give you two big thumbs up for that. I appreciate everybody watching and I'll catch you guys next time.